Well, I, I know I can't fold for five dollars. No, but <laughs> <laughs> you can. We're back at Capitol Casino for Vlog 170. This is a 1-3 game, buying for $500. Very first hand off the deck, we get Ace-10 offsuit in the small blind. There was a raise to $10, the caller on the button. I decided just to put in the call. Probably best to squeeze here. Anyway, we see the flop four ways, which comes out Ace high with two diamonds. Not bad. I decided to check. It gets checked around to the player on the button. He decides to bet for $30. Ace-10 is probably best at this point. If he had a bigger ace, he might have re-raised pre-flop. So he could have some sort of a draw. He could have a weaker ace. I decided just to put in the call. The player behind me also puts in the call. So I'm thinking maybe he's on a draw. And then the initial raiser also puts in the call. I think this is a pretty draw-heavy board. And when the king of clubs comes, I don't think it's going to hit anyone. It doesn't make any straights or flushes. So I decided to bet out for $100. A little unorthodox, I agree, but I just wanted to give protection to the hand, and I can't guarantee that the player behind me was going to put in a bet. So I make it 100 The player in the big blind puts in the call right away. The other two players fold out. Probably has some sort of ace or some sort of flush draw. Queen on the end. I think I'm probably best. I check. He rolls over ace five of diamonds, so he got a big flop, but he missed everything, and we start off the day with a win. Well, I was on a little bit of a cold streak, didn't get too many playable hands. Uh, it's been about an hour, and I finally pick up a pair of 10s from the low jack. There's a $10 straddle on this hand. I raced to 30. It's folded back around to the straddler who puts in the call. He can be doing this with a very wide range. If he had something good, I expect him to have raised. Anyway, the flop comes out, and it's not great for my particular hand. It comes ace, eight, six. He, qu he quickly checks. I decided to just check this one back. Turn card comes is another club. It's a four of clubs. He checks again, and I'm just going to check this back. I have a sense that he has something. He checks again on the river of a seven of clubs. I check it back. I think he might have made a flush or something, but he uh, flopped top set and decided to slow play it. And um, luckily I got to the river very cheaply and won it with a 10 high flush. There's one limper in front of me. I decided to raise to 20 with ace queen suited from the cutoff. Player on the button puts in the call. Everyone else ends up folding out. So it's just gonna be the two of us headed off to this flop. And we got $47 in the center. Flop comes out king high, but it does contain a queen. Uh, kind of a tough spot. Uh, I decide to lead at this because it does hit my range, and I have a little piece of it. There's also checking this would be fine. Uh, player behind me calls. Turn card comes is a six of hearts. It does introduce a possible flush draw. But other than that, I don't think too much has changed. I put out a small bet trying to control the pot size here. Uh, it was very unsuccessful. He decides to put in the min raise uh, and makes it $60. Um, when he does this, I think he has a pretty nutted hand. Maybe something like king-queen. Maybe he flopped a set of fours. I don't know. For $30, I'm going to take one off, see if I can spike an ace. It's probably a, a bad call, of course. But uh, we get a seven diamonds on the river. Of course, I'm a beat here like 100% of the time with this uh, player type. So I decided to check, and he bets small. Ends up betting $46. He just wants a crying call out of me, and um, I'm just not going to give it to him. I'm pretty sure I'm beat. Even though I'm getting great pot odds to put in a call, I just end up folding this and uh, kind of wasted a little money on this hand. 
There's a $10 straddle, uh, and I'm in the big blind with 5-4 suited. It's definitely good enough to defend, and we're going to go five ways uh, to this flop. Flop comes out pretty good for my hand. It comes queen 7-5 with two clubs. So bottom pair, flush draw. I check just like I would do with most of my range. It gets checked around to the player on the button who bets $35. Pretty good size. I decided to put in the call. He probably has a hand like a queen, maybe some sort of draw. We get one other call from the player in the middle position, and we get to see a turn card of a king of diamonds. Not very good for my hand. A five or a four would have been ideal. I check it, and it gets checked around rather quickly. River card comes is a 10 of clubs. I make my flush and I checked it because I thought the second over caller might be on a bigger flush draw. And after I checked, they bet for $25. The button folds out. I make a crying call here with my flush and sure enough, they show me the nine eight of clubs. I then went on a two hour stretch of just bleeding chips with playable hands here. I had pocket nines in the small blind. Eh, put in money, no good. Here, 910 suited. Put in a raise. Totally miss everything. Ace five suited. Yeah, no good. Again, pocket eights. Miss everything. It's getting a little redundant, but uh, you get the drift. Just been bleeding away chips. And finally, after adding on for additional $500. Two hours and 30 minutes later, I pick up King Jack and the hijack. There was a limper in front of me. I raced to isolate, but it didn't work. Ended up getting a bunch of callers. And we're going to a flop that comes out Jack 9-7. It's checked to me. I put in a bet of $40, about half pot. The button folds out. The blinds fold out. And only the init initial limper puts in the call. There's a lot of draws possible, a lot of jacks possible, and then there are some sort of pair and draw combos that are possible. So when the turn card comes as a nine of diamonds, I decided to pot control. He can easily have something like nine, eight or 10, nine. We see a river card of a seven of hearts, not very good, but uh, you know, I did pot control so he would take a stab at it with all his misdraws and there are a ton of misdraws out there. So he either has something like uh, he flopped a pair and a straight draw or he's bluffing. So I uh, try to get a read on him. I thought I picked up on something and uh, made me feel like this was more of a bluff than for value. So after some thought, I decided to put in the call and he said those two beautiful words I missed and he shows queen eight. So the drought is officially over. Well, I thought the drought was officially over. We kept on getting hands similar to this one where we have 5-4 of hearts in the middle position. There is a raise to $12. We decided to get involved since everyone else is in this damn pot. Hoping to flop something juicy. And we go off and we see a flop where we flop an open end straight draw. There's queen and a 7-6. Of, of course, there's two diamonds and we don't have any of those. Player bets small to our right. $20, I'm going to go ahead and draw for the straight. Player behind me decides to min-raise. He makes it $40. This is a pretty strong min-raise. Probably flopped a set or something. Player to my right puts in the call. Of course, I'm getting a really good price to draw to my straight. And the turn card comes, makes the flush. We're done with the hand. Player leads for $100. We fold immediately because we know that means a flush and we already had a player behind us with a probable set. The player behind us decides to jam, of course. Quick call. One shows pocket sevens and the other one shows the uh, king queen of diamonds. So just bleeding chips. Finally, after five hours, we pick up a premium hand. We got two queens from middle position, raised to 15. Get a call from the player uh, in the cutoff one from the player on the button, and one from the blind. So we're going to end up going four ways uh, to this flop with $61 in it. Flop comes out. Yeah, you guessed it. King high, two diamonds. First person checks. I check with two people behind me. They both end up checking. Going to be betting on this turn. Oh, an ace of diamonds comes. First player checks. 
Well, I picked up the nut flush draw. I can represent an ace here. Let me bet $40, see if I can just take it down now. Player in the cutoff goes into the tank for a while. And uh, he's a sort of a timid player, and I think that he's going to be folding. It looks like he's about to fold. But as you can see, the player behind him kind of checks his watch and folds out a turn, gets up and leaves the table. Yeah, not, not really good etiquette at this point because uh, he's still waiting for this person to act. And I think that might have been the deciding factor for him to put in a crying call. Well, he also has a pretty short stack. So once he has the call in there, there's really nothing I can do unless I just make my flush. Uh, it sucks. I double check. Yeah, I definitely have the queen of diamonds. So I figured I had two red queens. One of them would be a diamond. River card comes to the 10 of clubs. I just surrendered. He shows ace jack and said that he wasn't going to call, but that guy left. Hmm. Well, this is definitely the hand of the day. Uh, there is a $6 straddle. One player limps in front of me. I decided to limp with uh, pocket fives, just hoping to flop a set against somebody. Uh, big stack. He has about 2,000 to stack in the small blind, or sorry, in the big blind that puts in the raise to 40. Uh, the uh, straddler folds out. The first limper puts in the call for the 40. And here I'm going to set mine because both these players have over 2,000 in their stack. So we're going off to a flop, fingers crossed, and we get a beautiful flop. Comes 10, five, deuce. So we flop, you know, middle set on a draw heavy board. And I'm pretty sure the person in the big blind has an over pair at this point. He bets out for $65. Uh, player uh, next to act decides to put in the call for the 65. He could be doing this with a, a flush draw. Not many straight draws available. Uh, so he could also be calling with a 10. Here, I can definitely go for a raise to protect my hand, but I decided to put in the call because if he does have an overpair, he's going to fire big on the turn card if it's a blank. And it comes to seven of spades. Biggest blank in the world, in my opinion. And sure enough, our opponent bets out for $200, which is great because now the player uh, to his uh, left is in a tough spot. If he puts in a call, I'm just going to go ahead and shove all in because I'm pretty sure I'm good at this point. Um, but he doesn't put in a call. He decides he's going to put in a raise and not a big raise. He just raises it to $450. The player in the plus one position is a pretty good player. And uh, I think he has the same read on the big blind that I do. And he knows that he has an overpair. So when he puts in a raise for this sizing, it's strictly for value. I don't think he's doing this with any kind of draw. It's a value raise. And what hands would he do this with a value for value? It's either pocket tens or pocket deuces. There are no other choices. So the question is, which one of these does he have? I definitely think that he would play all his pocket tens. And uh, the question is, would he limp in with those pocket tens? I prefer to raise with pocket tens when I'm coming first in, but I can see where some players would limp in with pocket tens, especially in a very deep game like the one we're playing. Would he do it with pocket deuces? Would he limp with pocket deuces? He might. I mean, I say that he's probably going to fold some of his pocket deuces pre-flop and uh, play the rest. So in my mind, I'm giving him three combinations of pocket tens and two combinations of pocket deuces. So he's, in my mind, a 60% favorite in this hand, and I'm going to play accordingly. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm not worried about a flush draw anymore. I'm only worried about whether he has tens or deuces. So I decided just to put in the call. It might make it look like I am still drawing, and I want to get the overcall from the player with the overpair. But after some thought, he decides to let it go, and he ends up making a very good fold, which was later discovered to be pocket kings. I only have $200 left in my stack, and I'm going to be calling any bet on the river, and I'm sure that this person is going to be shoving all in uh, with any river card. River card comes as a three of diamonds, and then this happened. $5. Okay, $5? Oh, you didn't say it. He didn't say it. $5. <laughs> Can I say it? 
That's a five dollars. Good trick. <laughs> no, I'm going to say it. Really? You're going to say it right, No. No. Well, I, I know I can't fold for five dollars. No, but <laughs> <laughs> you can. I can. Uh, I I have such a bad feeling about this hand. It's uh, unbelievable. Five dollars. I don't want any more. If you have diamonds, obviously you're gonna raise me, right? No, I have to probably just set over set. See, I don't want. I knew you had set. How come you didn't shut sure. up? Dog, you crazy guy. You well, he was a little bit disappointed he didn't get full value from me. Uh, I was going to be calling no matter what, of course. But uh, I was just hoping to get the show down since I figured he might very well be ahead of me. Anyway, uh, it just shows the way the game has been going for me today. Just running into it uh, left and right. Uh, but I figured if he's going to let me keep $200 behind, I'm going to try to put it to good use. So I decided to see if I can run this $200 back up and uh, get even or maybe even a little bit ahead. Well, I don't have to wait long for my first opportunity. I look down at two aces and I'm in the plus one position. There's a player who limps in front of me and I decided, I know, this is bad. I went to for the old limp re-raise strategy and I limp with my aces. Player to my left puts in a call and then I have a player with about $2,000 stack who raises to 15. Player at the end of the table puts in the call, so does the player to my right. And now I decided to put in a, a mini squeeze to $60. Basically, I'm just going to take my chances with aces and I'm trying to build the biggest pot possible. Player to my left folds out. The other player who put in the initial raise puts in the call for the $60. Player at the end of the table puts in the call. And now the player to my right with a short stack decides, hey, why don't we just get it all in there? So he puts it all in for uh, $115, which is a $55 raise over my $45 raise. So it reopens the betting. Perfect. I'm going to get it in here. I say all in. There was some debate on whether that was legal or not, but after working it all out, uh, the player to my left makes the call and so does the player at the end of the table. So we're going to have a $530 pot in the main and 267 on the side. For a flop that comes out 8-5-3 with two clubs, pretty good flop for my hand. I got a backdoor flush draw, and there's not too many two-pair possibilities. Turn card's not great, it's a six of clubs. It does give me a, the nut flush draw, but it puts up a lot of two-card possibilities and a possible straight, and then the river is a two of spades. And uh, that's definitely a bad card because who knows what this player to my right has. He looks like he's pretty happy. Anyway, I show my pocket aces. The other two players muck their hands. So I'm going to be getting the side pot. And the player that shoved all in, he had 7-4 suited. $115, 7-4. Good game, bad results. Well, even after that hand, I decided to continue and play on that uh, last $200 free roll that I had. Uh, ended up playing for about two hours uh, more. Ran it up to maybe $600 at one point and then uh, back down and was all over the place. Nothing really exciting too much. I did get pocket aces against someone with pocket kings and I doubled through them. Unfortunately, my stack at that time was rather short so it wasn't that great of a pot. But uh, that's what happens when you play short stack. You always get the big hands then. Overall, it was a very long and frustrating day. Didn't get too many things to go my way, but uh, that's the way poker is. You're going to have days like that, and you're just going to have to deal with it. Ended up losing. Uh, of course, that's not always good. But $1,160 is not that bad of a loss for some of the hands that I got beat. That uh, pocket fives against pocket tens. Yeah, that was a tough one. I actually thought about folding uh, on the turn, but I just couldn't let it go. Um, just because of the fact that he didn't raise coming in kind of, you know, played in my mind too much, I believe. As you also noticed that uh, the avatars have disappeared from my opponents. Um, I decided it wasn't the best of ideas to be labeling uh, opponents I've been playing with. Um, some of them might take it as to be a, an insult or offensive if I don't label them as a shark. So 
from now on, I'm just going to keep them as unknown people and uh, play it accordingly. If there's some specific information available, I'll let you know before the hand starts. So thanks for watching. I really do appreciate your support. If you haven't uh, subscribed to the channel, please do so. It does help out the channel grow. And as always, a thumbs up is always welcome. And if you happen to want to share it with someone, go right ahead. You can show them how badly I, I lose. Anyway, until next time, good luck at the tables, and we'll see you back here next week.